Okay, we'll begin. Today our topic are our TDS modules, which are our tiny serial to Ethernet converters. Uh, here's our agenda for today. Today first we'll discuss our serial to Ethernet conversion or how to uh, do serial to Ethernet conversion. Uh, then we'll do an overview of our TDS series, which are our tiny device servers. We'll show you how to configure the TDS modules for serial to Ethernet conversion, and we'll go over some application examples. ICP-DOS was established in 1993. Our headquarters is in Xinchu, Taiwan, and ICP-DOS USA was launched in 2001 to support the North and South American markets. All of our products are ISO 9001 certified, uh, we're Rojas compliant, and we're a Microsoft embedded partner. Uh, here's a few examples of uh, serial devices. Uh, you might have heard the terms RS-232, RS-422, and RS-485. And some of our protocols that are used or that utilize uh, serial protocol or serial communication are our DCON protocol for our I-7000 and some of our RAC systems, and our Modbus RTU devices, whether it be a Modbus RTU slave, like our um, M7000 series, or like our wind packs, which uh, are controllers which have RS-485 communication to communicate to remote uh, I.O. modules. Uh, Ethernet communication, I think everyone knows that Ethernet standardly, standardly communicated over RJ-45, and some of the protocols that utilize it are Modbus TCP and Modbus UDP, as well as almost everybody's uh, internet network and inter-office networks. Our TDS series, first we'll go over the features. Okay, our TDS uh, series is shown in the red on the far right. Uh, this is a comparison between a few of our modules which have similar uh, purposes. Uh, the TDS module is a dedicated module for serial to Ethernet conversion. Uh, the other two modules, the I7188E and the TDS700 series, those uh, have a firmware which can be loaded into or by default are or do act as uh, serial to Ethernet converters, but they're also programmable, whereas the TDS is not. Um, the 7188 and PDS also have uh, some digital I.O. built into it and can run the virtual com uh, software, which the TDS also has built in. A configuration for the TDS is also much easier. It's got a slightly uh, slower processor, but it, because it's a dedicated module and not a controller, it doesn't need as much. Um, here's our selection guide for our TDS series. We have isolated and non-isolated modules, all in plastic cases with various combinations of RS-232, RS-422, and RS-485 COM ports. Uh, the CR just stands for Rojas Compliance, and the I stands for Isolation. So if there's potential for uh, a surge in voltage or something, then you'd want to use our isolated uh, modules. Uh, specifically on the COM ports. And let's see, the second digit after the seven, that calls out the number of COM ports, and the uh, last digit calls out the type of COM port. A two for RS-232 is the last digit. A five uh, are RS-485 modules, and the eight's a combination. So you would choose the appropriate module based on number of COM ports you need. Traditionally, it's one, but if you need multiple for your application, then you could get the uh, two-port or three-port versions as well. Uh, the features, uh, in brief summary, uh, the TDS module contains a 32-bit MCU processor that handles network traffic. Uh, like I said, because it's a dedicated module, it doesn't need the fastest processor. Um, let's see, it handles automatic RS-485 direction control, so whether you're sending and receiving, uh, the chip inside is 
designed to control the direction of the flow of uh, communication. Uh, 10 base 100 for Ethernet communication. And it's got all these features, auto negotiating, auto MDI, LED indicators to show network traffic or communication happening for troubleshooting, and the firmware is updatable through the Ethernet if necessary. Um, it's got redundant power inputs. Traditionally, people uh, power these with uh, between 12 to 48 volts through the DC connector on the far right, but it also has the ability to support power over Ethernet. Uh, it's the 15.4 watt version. Uh, it doesn't use anywhere close to that, but that's the uh, spec that it's designed under. And you can use both as a redundant power supply if you want, but uh, the power jack takes precedence. Or actually, I'm sorry, the PoE takes precedence. Um, the housing, it's a tiny form factor. The dimensions are shown on the far right. Uh, the modules themselves are DIN rail mountable. Uh, the power consumption of these modules is very low. And these are Rojas compliant and do not have halogen uh, uh, within the module itself. And the housing is uh, fire made of fire retardant uh, materials with uh, UL94-V0 level. Uh, not sure what that is, but uh, it's a standard that is specified in the documentation. Uh, some additional features. Uh, these modules are completely configured using a web server. Uh, let's see, we have a tool called eSearch, which I'll show you shortly, which can be used for setting the IP address, or you can uh, set your computer temporarily to the default IP, IP address of the module to configure the IP address and network settings, and then you can connect to it using Internet Explorer, like I'll show you shortly. Um, the module does support uh, TCP, UDP, HTTP, DHCP, and all these protocols shown here. Uh, configuration of the module. We'll go over some slides showing you the steps, and then I'll connect the module uh, live for you to see uh, some more details. A configuration. Uh, let's see, there's two options to set the IP address. Well, I guess three. If you're network already happens to have the same gateway and subnet mask here, uh, you can just uh, put the module directly on the network uh, as is, but most likely that's not going to be the case. So what you'd want to do is set your computer's gateway and subnet mask to match uh, that of the module with a unique IP address, something like 192.168.255.10, where the last uh, digit is different. Uh, then connect to the module and uh, log into the module to configure, which I'll show you shortly. Or you can use our eSearch utility to set the network IP address for the uh, TDS module. Uh, once you set the IP address, you open Internet Explorer and type the IP address in the address bar. It'll prompt you with a a login screen where you type in the password. By default, it's admin with a capital A, and you can change that afterwards for security. Uh, then you get to the products homepage, which looks like this, uh, where it gives you an overview of the module's current configuration. And then you can click on the network settings uh, tab or icon and set the IP address or change the IP address. You must be on the same network as the module to configure it, but afterwards, once you click the update settings, the module will be connectable using the new IP address, which you're gonna, you can configure here if you want. Uh, from there, uh, you click on the port one tab to configure the baud rate and parity options for uh, the uh, COM port. If there's one in this case, then there's only one, but I'll show you a module with a port two and a port three. Um, these modules also support pair connection, which I'll go over shortly. Uh, we have we provide IP filtering as a security option within this module. And this is a picture of our eSearch utility, which is I'll show you shortly also is used to configure the module's IP address if your computer network is not 
on the default. Uh, let's see. Instead of doing applications, I'm going to convert over to. Let's see. And okay, this is our eSearch utility. Uh, we can click Search Server to identify or search the network for modules uh, currently connected. Right now, I have a TGW. Uh, 725, which is a similar module to our TDS. Uh, you would just click on it and you can do configuration. And this is how you would set the IP address uh, with the subnet masking gateway. Uh, the subnet masking gateway must match that of your PC that you're wanting to communicate with. And the IP address uh, you would type here and then you would click OK. Then from there, you could open up Internet Explorer and here. And type the IP address, which you configured. In this case, I use this one. And you would get a, a screen like this, where it would allow you to type login, like admin, which is the cap, uh, default password. Oops. And you would get a screen like this. This would be an overview. This is a TGW module, but since we're focusing on our TDS modules, I just wanted to show you how simple it would be to uh, get into the module, how you would open it, and how you would configure it. Okay, let's continue on with our slides. Okay, so we're in the application section right now. Okay, the first and main application for the TDS modules is using virtual COM ports. The module itself is uh, configured with a dedicated uh, port numbers, which are referenced by the PC. So once you set an IP address to the module, whatever devices are connected to the COM1 of the device would connect to the module using uh, the IP address and port 10001, and devices connected uh, to port 2 would be the IP address and port 10002. Uh, for some COM port utilities, uh, you can, uh, what do you call it, use the IP address and port number instead of a COM port number. But for most software packages, uh, they require a COM port connection to talk to a serial device. What we're doing is essentially tricking the computer into thinking it's got COM ports uh, but truly they're connected to devices uh, or to the TDS module connected to the to your Ethernet network. So the VXCOM driver which you install on each PC that's connected to these modules which you want to con communicate to the end devices, you install the VXCOM driver. What it does is uh, adds virtual COM ports to the computer's uh, registry. So the computer will think it has a COM port 6 and COM port 7 in this case. So whenever you open a, a software package, you can open a connection to COM 6 and talk to devices connected at the top, or uh, COM 7 uh, and they're communicating at the bottom. This is great for devices which are in the, within the network in the office, but uh, not directly connected to the computer. So you can have it at uh, anywhere within the Ethernet network, you can talk to, say, devices in different rooms uh, connected to the same network and uh, all from a central location connected by Ethernet. Uh, this protocol or this device uh, provides seamless or hidden or transparent uh, protocol or communication, so no protocol is used in this device. So whenever you send a serial string to uh, COM6, it goes to the top only. Uh, if you send the serial string to the COM7, it goes to the bottom only, and there's no additional characters added in this module. Uh, here's an expanded uh, the application diagram. This one uses a switch and multiple TDS modules. In this case, here you have a virtual COM port 5 at the top with devices connected to the TDS 712 a virtual COM port number six, 
with devices connected to the TDS 715 and uh, two virtual COM ports associated with the TDS 725 at the bottom. So all of the TDS modules have unique IP addresses, but the VXCOM driver installed in the PC is what would essentially point your computer to the IP address and the port number of the TDS module when you open the COM port in your PC. And this diagram, it also uses the NS208 PSE, which could be used to power the modules themselves as well through the Ethernet connection. Um, let's see, the TDS modules also allow you to, uh, let's see, do a, a serial tunnel uh, through, <coughs> through Ethernet. Um, so you can have two devices talking to each other uh, directly connected uh, through an Ethernet network where one TDS module you configure as a pair and it points to uh, the IP address and port number of the other TDS and devices can communicate to each other uh, with without uh, something in between or just with the switch in between. And since you can set baud rates within the TDS modules, um, let's see, you can have different baud rates for each of the devices on each side. So it almost acts like a repeater through the ethernet. Uh, let's see, this application, or this drawing pretty much shows the previous application where it adds the ability to uh, show the pairing of devices. If you can see on the left side, you have a PC connected by RS-45, daisy chaining to two TDS modules, and you can communicate to the other devices on the other ends by using a serial to Ethernet pairing. Uh, some applications these are used in. Uh, industrial automation, uh, that's what one of our main focuses, SCADA systems like Indusoft, uh, data logging using Easy Data Logger and uh, for Modbus RT communication or serial communication, manufacturing, solar power, uh, wind power, uh, food processing, laboratories, it's uh, very commonly used, automotive and robotics, and oftentimes security systems as well. Uh, for remote applications, these are also used for vending machines. So uh, uh, someone from a central location can connect to a vending machine system and know when uh, something is running low, like uh, to restock it. Let's see. And if you have any questions, I'll answer it at this time. Uh, our contact information is also shown at the bottom if you have questions after uh, the meeting and you forget to ask during the meeting.